Yo, what's poppin' YouTube in America? It's T-H-E-M-O-S-H-O-W Chicago, and we are back with another episode of We Got That Smoke with none other than the master teacher, Bobby Hemmett. But before we get started, if this is your first time watching the show, we ask that you listen, share the information, smash up the likes, and get ready to learn. We're going to jump right into this thing, you all. Peace out and thanks for viewing. Master teacher Bobby Hemmett, we got that smoke. The, the, the 
Shakti energy and the Kundalini force and the and the uh, astral body around the penis and the Shakti energy will kill anything. If the vaginal secretions and stuff will kill anything going. If the AIDS, you you susceptible to all types of shit. We know they give you the AIDS. They tell you you're taller than they You're susceptible to any damn thing by using your fucking condom because you're cutting the energy. You see what I'm saying? You're cutting the energy. So. Why is this? Because we gotta understand the reason why drugs affect 
up so much is because we're melanin people. And melanin responds to stimulants and altered substances or, 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 or substances of altered states of consciousness and stimuli and different types of drugs, different types of food. Melanin responds to that. Okay? Sugar in the ancient world was a potent drug. You see what I'm saying? It was a potent drug. Dr. Charles Smith said that the Egyptian priests used to take sugar and eat it and go to other levels of consciousness. It's just because sugar is such a part of our diet now. We don't get that, but then again, on the other hand, what I'm doing to new weeds, real sugar probably would. You see? So they already studied the melanin, understood that one of the keys, they understood that marijuana makes the melanin levels jump within. Thirteen minutes of smoking marijuana, the melanin levels increase 100%. That's what they talked about in the uh, uh, Russell J. Reader's book. In Joe Robinson's book, Melatonin, Your Body's Own Wonder Drug. So, hence why marijuana is a deal. But, sugar to the ancients had to have not been one of those hallucinogenics or one of those drugs that, now try to understand this how it goes. When they were making sugar out of a regular sugar cane, we don't know how long they've been doing this shit. We find out about it 10, 15 years later. I just found out about this. And I was shocked because the last time I used some sugar cane in South Carolina, my grandfather used to bring that shit and it'd be this big around. So when he told me something like this, I said, hold it, hold it, hold it. Back the fuck up. I don't, I spent no time, nobody should damn sugar cane. A brother from the islands came up to me in New York when I told the story and he said, uh, uh, we, we, that's all we deal with down there, sugar cane. He said, but it's interesting when I went home recently, when they planted this, this shit right here. Now, what I'm saying is this about the sugar. Let's say, we don't know how long, let's say 15 years ago. The brother from been working down here for five years. Two or three years, so I don't know, we don't know how long they've been doing these things. Let's say about 15 years ago, they had the regular sugar cane. Okay, the regular sugar. And you had 15 years ago, there were certain cells and chakras and sugars in your body that were shut down because we hadn't gone through the quickening period. Then we go through that, you know, I don't know this quickening conscious ancient. Hell, 15, 20 years ago, you couldn't get this shit away. Nigga might look at you like you crazy. <laughs> but all of a sudden, around the late 80s and the early 90s, we had a jump in the consciousness. You remember? So they shut it down in the, in the, in the mid, 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 mid 90s. They put people back to sleep. But you all got on board. So what I'm trying to say here is this. Let's say if you had the real sugar now, which put the dust up 15 years ago, but now you'd be going to another level. It would probably be something that would take you on another level and melanin would respond to it. So therefore, they had to clone that and that shit shut down melanin because it's a shut down product. It's a, you know what I'm saying? And the melanin responds to the low level of what this shit is. So, we now have a link here. Because we, we've been tracking this shit for the last, since, since 98, 99, the number one seller in the black community was 12 packs of soda for 99 cents. It's gone off. So, apparently, this is one of the keys to the melanin. And it's not just in soda. That's what they're going to do. They really want to put a bunch of niggas on lockdown. But it's in everything. And Cause I wanna know, did the juice out <laughs> get up under in the 90s? Got that juice out and getting the soda out. And the shit tastes so good, that's how you know the shit gotta be good. They got some 
the ball shit. And I have to hold on. I'm like, goddamn, shit's so good. So when we talk about something, it's like crack cocaine. <laughs> the sugar. But then again, on the other hand, now let's go back now. Because we've still been trying to figure this crack shit out. Because we know that the crack, that everybody been saying, and, and most people, they've been saying, that, oh, when I got hooked, I got hooked the first time. You say, you know what? Uh, how many people were hungry? It had to get hooked at least the first or second time I used it. But what about if you already had a precursor to the crack in the sugar? Now you get it? Then you can understand why this shit fuck black people up so much. Why is it? You see, we talked about this before when the brother said he went to McDonald's and ate the fish sandwich and he used to snort cocaine and he said no, his lip was numb and his nose was draining and he went to eat a McDonald's fish sandwich and his nose started draining and his lip got drunk, got, uh, and his lip got numb and it was in the black community. So obviously they had a precursor to the cocaine and stuff. He was already hooked on cocaine through the fast food. So when you did the crack, it got you hooked the first time. It's some shit, you know. What, what about this shit with the sugar? And what about if the sugar is a hybrid shit that's manufactured and the shit is like crack cocaine? Do you understand what we get here to today? See, one thing needs to know what's that thing? This is a scientist thing here, so. Let me tell you something. Spirit always has me on all kind of crazy shit. All this goddamn cherry soda. God loves the shit cherry. I don't know why. God loves the shit cherry. I'm not a child. Fuck this cherry soda. Drink this shit out of candy. Shit, when the shit goes up like that, the shit is good. Pour the shit in a glass. And the shit tastes like chemical. Because see, what happened was, it's coming through a little hole. It ain't getting enough oxygen. So it tastes like cherry soda. Pour it in your goddamn can. The shit tastes like bleach. Pour it in the glass, tastes like peach. See what I'm saying? But what I'm saying here is this: what about if the sugar is a form of crack cocaine? And whatever you take in the drug form, you get addicted because you're already addicted. And we know that shit shuts down the melanin molecule. But here goes again with a man talking these modified foods. Modified food. I don't know if they got them up here. They got the shit down here. Chuckles. They got them chuckles down here. Up here. Well, the same big fat motherfucker who started this shit for Bob Hawkins is up here. That's the motherfucker who started the chuckles in Atlanta. No, Bob Hawkins. He's up here. Ain't he up here now? They got a shit that check us down and you gotta eat. And you gotta eat. And they sell it. Well, not that I said all day. It's not a special no more. That's their regular price. <laughs> but if you eat more than two, you come down sick. Because they got additives up in that shit. That's what I'm just trying to say. Whole bunch started them shit and you booked up and you came straight here, right here with Larry. Now remember, he's the now he started in Atlanta, they got them all over Atlanta selling them for a dollar, and you don't realize the CDC is down in Atlanta, Georgia. And most niggas that's successful in business get run out of business. And this motherfucker go on and he done with checkers to damn Burger King and other things here. And now he where they take him? They take him to the damn third world country now, Detroit. Fucking 
buffalo wings. You be down there 50 on fucking thing. <laughs> but a chicken ain't got but two damn wings. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Does he have a wing in his asshole or something? <laughs> a chicken ain't got but two wings. Now you might, in Buffalo when you might get four, I don't know, you might get four wings per chicken. Because you get the little drum in, and then you get the little wing part. But damn, get me a damn, okay, four wings per chicken. You know what I'm saying? If you got a hundred wings, that's telling you you got a few fifty chicken. That don't make sense. So that means in one grocery freezer, you might have enough wings to kill down to every chicken in one grocery freezer. Not every grocery freezer, it's all in all the grocery freezer. You might have enough chicken in one grocery store to kill every chicken in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's telling you that all food, there's no such thing as real food. Real food is probably been gone. You understand what I'm from here? It's, real, it's been gone. But going back, sugar, is in everything. Not even in the sweet shit. Not even some of the shit you would eat that's salty. Got sugar in it. You see what I'm saying? All your sauce, everything has the high fructose corn syrup in it. And now you saying it's shutting down the whole central nervous system. Well, hell, that's, that's where melanin is in the whole central nervous system. You see? But remember now, like a man said, we do taste now. Because we do have these generic babies. And one thing about them now, they might be raised on funyuns and skittles. <laughs> <laughs> no, my aunt, she was nine ladies when I was there. She was getting 1969. My mother remember that shit. From, you know, we had the M&M's and they had the red m and They took that out and they brought the red m and back in 1961. And the nile is hit around 68. <laughs> that fucked up a whole generation of other boys. <laughs> but these motherfuckers are raised on skittles and funyuns. <laughs> but despite them being generic babies, they're smarter than you know, anything that I ever did in the fucking sixth grade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just amazing that they can be so young and they can even have the audacity to think up some shit so condescending and facetious. So, it'd be some group 
But just be sure to be doing what a piece of genius shit. I wouldn't have thought about it until high school. I'm trying to do this shit at two and four. If you know it, I'm just trying to say the caliber of what is the way they think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The way they think. You know, they the mannerism, they sit there and be chilling, watching TV and shit, chilling around y'all quiet, you know. That's so when they get quiet, it's like a grown person shit. Just sitting there yeah. like they're 40 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Something 
Like they're trying to massage the two year old or something. Yeah. So I'm pregnant. As big as I am, I'm never sick. And I'm never hurt. Now my mom was the same damn way. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she done let the doctor, she done let them convince her with this high blood pressure diabetes. We're going to get into it when we come back. According to this book, Kundalini, in the jail or death. It, it, it's, it's impossible for you not to have high blood pressure if you're on the spiritual path. But that's an attribute. We talked about this before we go going deeper into this thing. But I'm never sick. I'm never hurt. My bones never, I've never, I don't know about what a bone snake is. I never had aching bones. So when they started to massage me, it started hurting me. I'm like, you got to stop. But I ain't never, my, don't you, don't your shoulders ever feel tired? I ain't never had that before. <laughs> So obviously I already know what the shit is. It's got something to do with mind over matter. I, I, my mind, I'm still 19. And ever since then I've never thought of myself other than being young. So therefore I know that it's got something to do with psychological and that's what you got to come to, to the aspect. But then again, on the other hand, I ain't working the last two years. <laughs> Understand those, there's different, that's a different, a different 
things in the Torah. Uh, different things in the Torah. That's, so those books, if you go buy those books from A to Z, then you're confused because the simple fact we're talking about is what? Dozens of books taken out of the conference of Nicaea. And we're talking about just uh, Revelation is the only book in the damn Bible because it didn't come from the Bible. It comes from the Persian Apocalypse, which is if you get the book of uh, um, Parallel Mythology. Um, his name is um, J. Virulin. J. Virulin, Parallel Mythology. And they have all these apocalypse in there. If you get the Persian Apocalypse, they literally just take plagiarized. So this book predates the Bible by thousands of years and the Persian died from the library of Alexandria. Uh, when Cam East was raided in from Persia. Persia now, as you know, modern day Iraq, ancient Babylon, and so on, all that's the same thing. But that apocalypse is something one that the Bible gets. They get it from Persia. So they know that John the Divine and all this old bullshit on some out. These are pamphlets that was put together by authors. That's the book 101. Bible myths. I think that's the number no, 101 myths of the Bible by what's that guy? Green 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 uh his name is uh, Gary Greenberg. Gary Greenberg, 101 myths of the Bible. That's what it is the whole this mystery by Gary Greenberg. And basically he's uh edited uh commentaries by several authors around that area the word of God. What the fuck does that mean? You know, that God is in the right damn books. He don't shit now. You know, these are ancient, now, these are ancient fragments from the mystery systems. Taken out of the mystery school and by the later cults or the later authors put them together for whatever society that they found themselves in. You see what I'm saying? They find themselves in and stuff. So the Quran is the word of God. Why does it have the Old Testament in the front of the damn thing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he got his revelation that nobody got, but it's the Old Testament in the front of it. Jesus got his revelation that nobody got, but the Old Testament is in the front of it. All this is edited stuff and all that. The thing about it is we got to grow up and understand the esoteric uh, uh, part of behind these particular things because it has nothing to do with the program that you think and well, this is the way it's supposed to be in the Bible, this is the way now we're in the book of Revelation and all. And then it's an alchemical text that's talking about your body going through a certain transformation and transmutation. The apocalypse is inner, alchemical, chemical marriage and an alchemical wedding of the rising of the soul. You see, so if you're going to deal with anything, deal with that instead of inspiration at this particular time. You know what I'm saying? You're world class people now. Uh, if you went to the Pope, you couldn't come at him for the fucking Bible. He looked at you like you're crazy. He'd probably get killed up in the Vatican, but that's it. Guys, <laughs> they put out his stuff in the, the esoteric teachings behind the papacy. There's a whole book called Theosophia. On what the Pope and him deal with Theosophia by, um, uh, uh, Arthur vs. Lewis, Arthur vs. Lewis, Theosophia, and they're dealing with the realm of the goddess. They, they say, shit, if you motherfuckers up in here right now, trying to get somewhere, and your text doesn't comprise the goddess, you are insane. The Pope in them, though, they don't even try to, they even tell you right there, very much a god is the most important thing, even more so than Jesus. Why? Because they study... The God is Sophia, which is the same God as Oshun. You see what I'm saying? The whole concept is to go back into the court of the goddess, the realm of the goddess. You see what I'm saying? That's the key. You know, the divine feminine. So if you got any male showing this murder cult religion that ain't dealing with the divine feminine, you're wasting your damn time. And you know the sad part about it is, with black people, our lives socially, just not even said that bullshit of a father. When we know it's our mama, it's every damn thing. She is everything 
from the mundane to the monumental, from the sublime to the damn nightmare. She's all of that shit. <laughs> Which is all in the rock. Law of the world. 
that Apollo thing, uh, that Apollo thing, you know, in the uh, in this particular tape, uh, which is very interesting. Now, let's see where we are now. We've got a lot to cover. Uh, and we just started to mention. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh. I don't want to, I, I still want to, I'll touch on a few points. Uh, so still just going up. Here's one, here's one that's real key. Uh, they had a suspension on Colonel Sanders, you know, on biography. They had a thing on Colonel Sanders, and they talk about his own, uh, really dead crap over Kentucky. And they had to run a damn gas station on the Green's Market. And all of a sudden, these folks put together some chicken with some lemon herbs and spices. Saying to become rich off this shit. <laughs> and before they started adding, they added all that MST to it. In which the, the Colonel Sanders family came and told them that you can't call it Colonel Sanders no more. Or the Kentucky Fried Chicken, so it's not Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because they was adding all the MST to it, so they started calling it KFC. But when they put the shit, before, you know, when it's the real lemon herbs and spices, you know damn well there ain't no man from the Greek monkey dropping transmission space yet. The story is, just like all stories, is Kentucky was a slave state. And the slaves put these recipes together in slavery, and the families held on to them recipes that was in his family based on what slaves or whatever. You know, and he gets to a certain point of that ain't that ain't fair, but he starts putting together that stuff that his family and him had, them recipes that black people put together. And again, you got leather and spices. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing, and you're thinking this old Greek monkey did this. But it just shows how they just steal things like that. You know, how they just steal things like that. But, uh, you know, and it's just interesting that I just want to put that out there. But I'm watching the show, and uh, I'm like, ain't no way in there. The spirit is like, come on, man, you know, that. You know, damn well what happened. And the story goes on and on with thousands and thousands of things. You know what I'm saying? Even your cell phone technology. We put together right there with a guy that went to Clark College down in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, and stuff. And I'm quite sure he's probably in the food stamp somewhere or something. Because that way he ain't been a bit from this. So they do these types of things and all, you know. They do these types of things uh, over and over again. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, which is interesting here because I'm going to get into a couple of things here. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I want to deal with this, uh, water situation. Uh, this water situation. Before I do that, I want to, uh, I still want to, um, yeah, I'll deal with that first. Um, the word kidneys comes from the word echidna. That's a, that's a Greek goddess called echidna. You learn more on her, get a book called The Gods of the Greeks. By Carl Carini. Let's see if I got something on Carl Carini. Uh, Guys of the Greeks, go Carl Carini. Now I'm going to reference this. Uh, I'm going to reference this. This came out. Uh, Carl Carini, Guys of the Greeks. Now, uh, this is one that is a must have. This came out in 2000. This is the Dictionary of All Ancient Deities. They got is in this book from Egyptian, Dogon, Greek, Mesopotamia, Babylon, everything is in this particular book. He is by far, and I think, you know, I got thousands of these books over the years, and it's by far uh, the greatest book ever put together with an assembly of the Egyptians. It is a must-have. $22. You must get this book. This is defined Patricia Turner and Charles Russell Coulter. C-O-U-L-T-E-R. C-O-U-L-T-E-R. You can find it in the mythology section at Barnes and Rogers or Borders. But you can order it at Amazon.com. I don't know how you get it. But get this book. This is an encyclopedia. This will save you thousands of dollars on tons of books. They just such a detail about the only one they don't have is these follows. Because they and I believe they would have put their follows in here. The follows if they were available, but we didn't even get nothing. 
in the Western Hemisphere until 1994. And we just get the one from out of here. In December, they didn't even translate them until all of the 2000. Mm. So that's the only one that's not in here. But everything from Houdoum, Europe, Dothan, West Africa, it is the greatest book. And this is the one that you need to get. This is a uh, this is uh, the greatest animation right here. And you know, I, I got I got a lot, I got a lot of when I'm looking at the same thing, put it down. This is the one, the dictionary of all ancient deities. This is the one that you need to get. You see what I'm saying? This one. From everything from the, they even revived all of the Chinese, and the Japanese, and the Asian deities that was lost. So they did their homework. They even revived it. They got the, the, uh, the stuff from Hawaii. Melanesia. You know, stuff like that. You all that for correspondence. Because remember, he who knows one book knows none. And the key is in studying, if you reference something that's coming out of tradition or God and goddess, you only get the fragment. There's other parts, and it's the same God all over goddess all over the world. It's just you need to go to the other part and reference it. One book was about it, which I do like about this one more than anything else is. A lot of them will give you God and stuff, and they don't compare them to nothing. And you know, each God, each, each, um, and in the end of each piece, if you look up, they'll say compare with ISIS, compare with this one, compare with that. And that way you can get some type of link of what you're dealing with. You see what I'm saying? And so that's, that's why I highly recommend this one. You see what I'm saying? Even the North Vietnamese. You see what I'm saying? Which is the most powerful. All of that stuff is in here too. So this is the one that you need to get. The dictionary of all ancient Vietnamese. That is why. See, I can afford to come up here and curse y'all out, be raunchy and stuff like that. But I'm doing, but I do something that most people don't do. I will give you something that you don't have to depend on me after you leave. That's the good thing about me. If I give you something to read, some book that you access and give you some stuff, then I have done you a greater service than you having to quote Bobby Nimitz when you're trying to learn something. You understand what I'm saying? That takes it out of you being uh, a subservient or you being uh, dependent on the, on, the, on the lecturer. This puts it back into the people's hands. You see what I'm saying? So if a person gives you bibliography, that's the greatest thing they can do for you. That means your money is well spent. That means you don't need Bobby Hemmett after you walk out this door. You see what I'm saying? You can go and access stuff, and if you feel that the stuff is not right for you or you you feel that you don't want to believe in it you have the option to weigh it whether i'm telling the truth or not based on you got the information i give you that's the best thing a person can give you is when they give you people the honor you see what i'm saying so that's why i can come up here and be on too because i'm doing the right thing by you <laughs> you know what i mean i'm doing the right thing by you so i, I can be on too like that you know that's the way she is that's what we, that's, 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 that's the real scholarship. You see, I can come up here with a long, white, flowing dial, I can make you feel good right then. And you can think you've been blessed by the hands of God and all that kind of thing. And I can give you a show. You see what I'm saying? But, this is when you know you're dealing with some stuff, when you can get this type of material. This is what this shit is about. It's about being a damn stupid. And not following the body here. You see what I'm saying? So, this is the, this is, this, I've been seeing this book since 2000, another sister died, and I said, let me see that. I opened it up and I was like, oh shit, this ain't here tomorrow. So I went and stole it. I went to the damn store. 